Dave Elliott, uh, the uh, co-creator of Rockstar Connect, along with my wife, uh, Sarah Elliott. She's in the other room making a drink for herself. Actually, she's walking in right now. Uh, so we can have that full three martini lunch uh, experience today. Uh, for those who have never watched the program before, uh, Rockstar Connect is a, uh, a panel-based program. Uh, we have a structure, and our goal is to uh, make our success contagious by sharing uh, our knowledge and our expertise regarding uh, business, marketing, uh, referrals, Sometimes we get a little bit on the spiritual side. Uh, other times we're just purely business. But uh, regardless, we're glad to be with you here this week. And it looks like everyone that's on the show thus far today uh, is a regular. And uh, we're happy to have you. We have a great uh, question this week because you know, Rockstar Connect is a uh, company that does uh, networking events all over the country. Uh, we're now back up, uh, not to where we were before COVID, but we're quickly getting there with uh, events all over the country. And people go to networking events for many different reasons. Some people go because of the social aspect of the events. Other people go because they want to expand their business. Uh, I guess in the light of COVID, people go uh, because they may feel a little isolated, a little lonely, and this is their way to reintroduce themselves back in the community. But one of the big motivators uh, for uh, going to a networking event is to grow your sphere of influence in order to uh, pass referrals. Uh, There's a little conversation going on before we went live uh, between a few of the members of the panel and they were passing referrals back and forth to one another, talking about referrals being passed. And there were some big numbers being thrown out there. I heard $100,000 and I heard, Hey, uh, not only that, we're going to be able to pay a referral fee to you. Uh, so today, to be instructive to people that um, you know may be new to networking or they want to refine their ability and making uh, warm introductions, making referrals, uh, the, the question is today, how do you make referrals and how do you benefit from making referrals? Do you benefit from making referrals uh, you know, by, by helping people in your sphere of influence, or do you actually get a referral fee on occasions? Uh, also feel free if you've had a great referral situation to tell us a little bit about that. Let's start with Rhonda Sher, who's a LinkedIn expert in California. We haven't spoken to her in a while. Nice to Glad see to you, have... Stephen. Nice Always to nice to see you. Glad to have you back on the show. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about referrals. I mean, you, you do make a lot of referrals. I do. In fact, um, one of the practices that I have is I set up two virtual coffees every single day with people in my network. And usually they're either people that I don't know, but I'm connected to on LinkedIn, or there are people that I'm in a networking group with. Um, but it's really just, it's never a sales pitch. It's really just to get to know them. And my goal is to see who I can refer them to. So um, that, that's really the goal. And to, I've already done it once today, which is pretty cool. So I um, was I was in another group kind of similar to this. You know, it was a Zoom group and um, somebody heard me do my elevator pitch and reached out to me and asked me to be a guest on their radio show. And it was phenomenal. And so at the end, he said, oh, my gosh, do you know anybody else that would make a great guest? You know, like because they know if you're good, you're going to know somebody else that's good. And I was able to refer three people to be guests on this show. And those three people were like, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. What can I do for you? So I think that, you know, for me, the goal is always start with serving first. I think of it like a bank. You cannot make a withdrawal from a bank unless you've made a deposit. So I'm always making deposits. And the way that I do the referrals is I have a sort of a standard email and it would say, uh, let's say I was introducing you to Clint. So it would say, dear, you know, dear Stephen, dear Clint, uh, I'm sending this email to both of you as an introduction. And then I would put a little bit about both of you. And then I would say at the bottom, I'm leaving it to the two of you to connect. Best regards. Um, sometimes I do get a referral fee. Like I actually have somebody that I didn't ask for it. Their standard is they pay a 10% referral fee. The guy is a ghostwriter. I 
would refer to him whether he paid it or not. The fact that he wants to send me a check, I'm like, great, you know, um, but that's not something that I, that is the last thing on my mind. You know, if it comes to me, that's terrific. If it doesn't, that's okay too, because I, I believe what goes around comes around. So that's my philosophy around referrals. And I truly believe, Stephen, the more you give, the more you get. So I want to be a super referrer. And there, there is a huge benefit uh, to being a super referrer. And, and like you said, putting money in the, in the referral bank. Uh, in my book, uh, now Mingle the Art of Face-to-Face -face Networking in the Digital Era, it talks quite a bit about uh, you know, giving and making referrals and making introductions and how well it pays off uh, on the bottom line uh, financially. Uh, you know, this morning I woke up on Facebook, there were two people that uh, made referrals to me of qualified buyers, you know, which will represent you know, together somewhere around, you know, $25,000 to $30,000 in commission. And I've never met these people. I've only <laughs> interacted with them on Facebook. They've gone, they've seen my different Facebook group pages and they had asked for referrals themselves in the past, or they've asked how would they be able to show themselves more properly on the page? Or is there anyone I can make introductions for them for? And people remember these things. They, they absolutely do. They do. And, you know, one of the things that um, I've actually started doing, and I'm also having my clients do, and I'm happy to share the link, um, is a way to imagine, this might be even great for you, Stephen. So imagine that you have all these people that you've helped in real estate, and you send them two gourmet brownies that have their name on it, okay? You know, maybe it's a picture of them, and you go to their Facebook page, and it's a picture of the new house that they bought. And all you do is you basically say, I'm sending you these gourmet goodies because I just wanted to say thank you and tell you how much I appreciate you. And then the PS is, um, you know, I was hoping I could get a couple of brownie points and hopefully some referrals to people you might know that might be thinking of buying or selling. Well, for $10, can you imagine that they're going to get, who are they? They're going to tell everybody about the brownies. Right. And, but you already get the pleasure of giving them the brownies because you know you're getting Yeah, because you got to give first, right? So you've already you've already won no matter what whether they send you a referral or not because you like to give gifts. Exactly. Uh, who, who here uh, actually works their sphere of influence, starts calling their list uh, as part of their regular uh, business in order to develop referrals as part of their exercise? Wow. Okay, Diego, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So. I'm a commercial realtor. My one of my best referral spheres is actually residential realtors. Uh, we are, Stephen. I, I don't know the numbers, but we are vastly outnumbered. I mean, it, in the market, it's probably you know 100 residential realtors to one commercial realtor, and uh, and so residential realtors are a wonderful referral network for me. And and it's you know, it's, it's fish in a bucket when it comes to, to calling them, because as your point made earlier, I can pay out a referral fee for anyone who uh, refers me a commercial piece of business uh, because of the way North Carolina uh, Real Estate Commission allows us to pay licensed agents referrals. So it's, um, it's an easy phone call to make. And, uh, and I'm grateful because most experienced real estate agents on the residential side don't expect a referral back. They know that the odds are going to be slim that I get a residential deal that I can refer out, but I can definitely hand a check back to them and they're more than happy to receive a check that is closed business than a possible referral that may not go anywhere. I think that, yeah, you're in a very good position in a referral relationship and there's other you know vendors like that, like a, a lender certainly or an insurance agent or a financial service person. Uh, as far as commercial real estate, it, you are, you're all, all eventually going to get a residential agent to refer to you. Because although a residential agent can do a commercial transaction, they quickly learn that they're not equipped to do it. And beyond that, it's the long game. A commercial transaction takes a lot longer and financially there's a bigger investment of time and also sometimes money in doing the research, et cetera. So you have referral partners that not only do they want to refer to you, they want to get that business off their plate. And the bonus is, is just a, just that it's a bonus. 
I imagine you rarely have a referral partner call up and say, hey, where's my commission? Why didn't that transaction close or get irate? They're just sort of grateful when they, they find out it closes, correct? That is that is typically the case. That's that is true. Although I will say there are there are very special relationships. I don't take any referral for granted. If there's a relationship that's being passed on to me, um, and I say that specifically, a relationship, not just a referral, but a relationship that's being passed on to me, I want to make sure that that relationship stays strong. Even if it doesn't close in business, I want to make sure that whoever's being referred to me feels like I've been doing what I need to do and, uh, and that the person that referred them, that relationship remains strong also. That's a, that's a key piece for me. Excellent. Yeah, really, right now, we have a lot of opportunities uh, to make uh, referrals, not just locally, but nationally. Uh, when I started with Caldwell Banker, there was a famous uh, agent who lived in a town with less than 600 people that made over a million dollars a year in referral commission. Uh, simply by, you know, at that time, it you know, wasn't so much internet, but it was him traveling, you know, going to a bar, restaurant, starting up conversations, building up a Rolodex of referral partners. But uh, really, you can create a, an enormous stream of, of income by doing referrals with intentionality, uh, either in referral fees or in referrals back to yourself. We got a lot of nodding going over there uh, by Clint. So uh, Clint, how do you deal with referrals? How do you, how do you make it part of your business practice? Well, starting from something that you just said about the nationwide stuff, the what we were talking about whenever you, whenever before the call started, Stephen, was Jenny's um, husband Scott um, sent me sent me a referral for somebody in D.C., um, Chevy Chase, Maryland. So essentially the same thing, and turned into a call today. It's going to be a call next week, and then hopefully a site visit and close business. And that was that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever it's going to end up being. So. And I don't think that Jenny and Scott would be expecting any kind of referral fee because what we do is, you know, we like I've been I've been I'm joining a BNI this week. Well, hopefully I'm getting, you know, they're doing all the stuff. But um, I've been asked a hundred times with these hundred one on ones that I've done. Is how do you refer business? My answer is the same every time. I don't refer business. I refer relationships. I refer people. I don't I don't do the business thing. Like so if that turns into business for you, fantastic. But I would rather put people in front of everybody, you know, in front of other people. And if they can help them, great. If they can't, they know somebody that can. They will refer somebody that can. And they'll just have more relationships and more relationships. Like today. Just perfect example of stuff like this that happens today. Kate, we talked to down kind of off the ledge this morning. And so it's like not only are we talking, you know, business relationships, we're also just talking about friendships here. And, you know, it's. With you guys, you know, Jenny, I see all the time. Um, Katie, never met in person, but her and I talk quite frequently. Diego, I've known forever. Yeah, Andrew, I will know. Five times a day, every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Andrew, I've known just from here. And, you know, so it's like all these personal relationships that we have make this what it is and make us successful at doing it. So I don't, I, I refer people. I don't refer business. So Rockstar Connect is very attractive to a lot of people that, that, that may not necessarily enjoy the BNI model. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it, it's part of, it's part of BNI to pass referrals. Yeah. You're, you're to, to bring, you're to, supposed to bring referrals to the table. Yeah. So if someone is equipped to bring referrals, you know, who does the work, I mean, you're out there networking, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to bring legitimate referrals that will lead to business but it won't, you, you won't necessarily get it returned to you. No, and I don't care about that. All I care, you know, and I was, I was telling somebody this a little while ago, whenever I get people together, so let's say I had a lunch where I'm introducing one person to another person or another group of people, one of my favorite things to do is to shut up, to sit back, to watch them communicate to each other, watch them engage each other, and of course, join in the conversation if they, if they ask me to or whatever, but it's, it's the pleasure that I get from seeing them connect on a personal level. That's my favorite part of all this. I'd like to hear a report back to you after a few months, what your thoughts are of BNI when. The well, you know, Stephen, the reason I never joined BNI before is because of exactly what you just said. I'd rather be walking around at North Hills world of beer with a, you know, like a social in a social situation more than a structured networking situation. You know, I'd rather be in an event 
at an event like yours, you know, which I've invited like, I don't know, probably seven and a half million people to so far, by the way, for next week or two weeks from now. But, you know, that's what I'd rather do than sit at BNI. But my job requires me to have those kind of relationships as well. And so I got to balance it at some point. Excellent. Yeah, but I'll report back for sure. Well, we definitely want to report back. Okay. Andrew Pierce, referrals. I've made referrals to you. You've made referrals to me. Yeah. Um, I love referrals. I love giving out the business. Um, and kind of like Clint was saying, just listening to the two people talk, the way I sort of listen, because obviously, Stephen, you and I are in different areas. I put the people in a Facebook group message with me so I can watch the interaction. And until I know that there's some traction there and they're going to move forward, then I can sort of let it go. Otherwise, you know, maybe Clint's not the guy for you, Stephen. So I've got to find you another person that will help you. So I don't just kind of casually toss the referral up and hope for the best. I wait until I know you've gained traction with the person I recommended, because that's a direct reflection on me. If you have a crappy experience, then you're going to remember that next time. Well, also, it's a, it's a great way to nurture the relationship and, and make sure that it's going to go through. And, and in real estate, there's some big commissions that are passed during referrals. So it can be a substantial amount of money. But also, what I like about that type of referral relationship, especially with other real estate agents, is I that person becomes part of my team. I'm not just going to go to them once. If they're successful, I'm going to go again and again and again. Yeah, I mean, like our little... Do I, do I work in, do I work on the coast? I say, yes, I absolutely do. I have a great guy that I work with. We're partners. And we even have to be in the same firm, but you know, Andrew's yeah. my partner, we partner up on those type of deals. Yeah. And I mean, because of that one transaction we did that was so successful and you wound up with a happy client that continued to use you for other things, you know, somebody else ever asked do you, who do you know at the beach? It's a positive reflection on me. Right. Absolutely. And I know you can serve my client better than me driving, you know, three hours out to the beach. Um, can I say something real quick, Andrew, yes. before I forget, Megs, I know I will. I'm sending somebody your way, by the way. Sweet. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, referrals in action. Mark, are you there? I think Mark's on another call. Let's go over to uh, Jenny. Hello. Hello. Referrals are a very big part of your business. All the business. All yeah. of the personal All your business. <laughs> How do you set people up on that type of relationship? How do you follow up? How do you keep track of it? Or is it much more organic than that? For it's for me, it's organic. I I mean, before the pandemic, uh, ninety percent of my business was word of mouth referral based. Since the pandemic, it's maybe you know seventy percent instead, and that's just because. I'll get more emails and and I've I've widened my circles uh, with all of the virtual networking. Um, it did like gave me a momentary panic that Andrew was like, I keep track of these things and these conversations, and then I leave. Like I was like, what? I don't do that. I send an email out. I make the connection, um, but I don't um, I don't make a connection unless I do it very intentionally, and I know that personality wise, that connection is going to be a strong one. Mm -hmm. um because to me that's just it i'm not going to refer for the sake of referrals um and i'm not going to do introductions i give you know a minimum of three introductions a day i just write up a quick email I'll give a story like hey i was talking to so and so they said they would be interested in um you know this xyz because i start every conversation by asking how can i help so um, and it's, I, I turned two people away last week. Cause I was like, you don't, based on what you're saying, you don't need me, but here's who you do need. And I'm happy to, to send them, uh, send you to them. And I know that they'll take care of you. Um, I do it without any expectation of anything in return. I just know that, um, you know, that's how I roll. That's how I operate. I, I, I it's, it's like, you know, it's like the, the, um, the friend, like Phoebe's thing, like, no, there is no true act of altruism, right? Like it's, there's always a return. There's always an ROI. And the ROI for me is like, yeah, it makes me feel good to be helpful. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, also, I mean, it's, uh, uh, we, we feel wanted. It's nice to feel wanted too. 
you know, yeah. the, the people that you can be helpful to other people. That's a great return on investment right there. Mm -hmm. As I've suggested, you know, Sarah and I, we reevaluated Rockstar Connect where we used to say, you know, it's, you got to give in order to get, and we reevaluated that to say that you were already receiving just by giving. Mm -hmm. uh, having that pleasure uh, is a, it's an immediate return on investment. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get in any other type of investment of your time. Right. What I'm seeing here though is, uh, and I think Rhonda could really, really teach a class on this because she is extremely systematic in keeping up with, with her referrals and scheduling her time uh, in a fantastic way. If your business is 70% referrals or if your business is 90% referrals or 100% referrals, it's time to delve into those referrals and see how you can also improve your business. So one of the things that I've done over the year is I've been making sure that people that are making the referrals to me also know that I may be looking for a certain type of client. That client is my sweet spot. I'm able to help that client better. And I'm also able to make more money because it's a better, it's a better match. Uh, the also looking back, I look back through every transaction I've ever had and I said, wow, there's some people here that I've definitely lost contact with. I've looked through yeah, every- Steven, Steven, I was gonna say, I think that's so brilliant because everybody is always looking for new people. And what we forget to do is nurture the people that we've already helped that are already our raving fans, you know? So I think what you're doing is absolutely brilliant and we could all learn from it. Because how many times do we actually, like Mother's Day is coming up, right? You don't have to be a mom. You, you, you came from a mom, right? Why not just send a card that says, I appreciate you, it's Mother's Day, so I'm celebrating all the moms in the world, right? And just, just that little thank you note of somebody that you've done business with just to acknowledge them. Can you imagine how far that's going to go? Well, that's, you know, one of the things I, I've, I've always wanted to do. I've never done it. And I know it's fantastic. And Rhonda used to be very involved in it is send out cards. Uh, but the one that I use now is so much better than send out so cards. Better. Who, what do you use? It's, it used to be called um, Banner and now it's called Mailbox Power. And that's, I put a link in the uh, chat if anybody wants to get it. What I love about it is it's not a network marketing program, okay? And you can literally send a personalized uh, gift. So if I wanted to send you brownies, I could put a picture of you and Sarah on the brownies and for like less than 10 bucks and a card. And there is no way that when I call or my assistant calls and said, hey, I just want to make sure you got the brownies that you wouldn't want to set up a call with me. Right. For sure. And, you know, um, I, you can definitely put that in the, the chat. We want to know about that. Don't underestimate the value of breaking bread uh, with people that have made you referrals or that you've done business with, because it takes it to an absolutely different intimate level as far as understanding who they are and what motivates them. And uh, if you were to, to extrapolate what you would spend on a, you know, a nice meal or a fancy meal or cooking, uh, the return on investment is very high. And of course, everyone, everyone has to eat. Uh, Adam I, Brooker. I, oh, yeah. Were you going to say something, Rhonda? I was just going to add one other thing. And that is, you know, when you talk about the value of a small gift, right? Like brownies or something like that. If there's somebody you want to get in front of, send them a gift and then just follow it up with a phone call. You know, I actually send the brownies and say, I'm, I'm sending this to get a couple of brownie points. Well, I used to be like, I used to be a door knocker when I did marketing when I was young. You know, I was marketing to healthcare. And I quickly learned that you need to get on, get, be friendly with the gatekeepers. That yep. was the most important thing. And I was working with a lot of nurses and a lot of social workers. So I would go to the movie theater and I would buy, you know, tickets at a discounted price, buy like 500 tickets. And then bring those and, and, you know, on Thursdays, bring it to the nurses and bring it to the social workers uh, so that they could have, you know, an evening out with uh, their significant other or with a friend. I brought buckets of, of carnations and roses. You know, these are not expensive things, but they were things that were much appreciated. <clears throat> and when uh, the big boss would ask for things, they would remember who, who I was. It generated a substantial amount of business for me. Uh, the, those real estate agents that deliver those pumpkin pies, 
you know, if you're the first pumpkin pie person in your area and that's your thing, you're a winner because that's great, you know, to have a phenomenal pie uh, on Thanksgiving or, you know, find, in other words, find that thing that's going to be your signature that you're going to do for people that they expect on a regular basis. And it's almost an automatic. Uh, Jenny, I saw you laid up for a minute. Was there something you wanted to say? Well, I mean, it was, you were speaking my language, right? Like the people that got in my office were the ones that started by usually bringing me food. <laughs> then, um, you know, or at which, you know, I would then say, well, do you have enough for the staff? Because I'm not the only one here and everyone's here taking care of patients. Um, but no, the ones that really made it in my, um, in my Rolodex that kept getting in the door that I would call frequently were the ones that approached me with the, how can I help? And so when I, um, you know, I think it, it's a, um, it can be a simple thank you card. It can be a simple, like get in front of somebody. It can be, um, you know, just a, approaching it. And that can be your thing, right? Like that can be your thing of just walking in and saying, what can I do for you to make your life easier today? And if that means that, you know, I'm introducing you to four different copywriters and it takes me 10 minutes to make all of the facilitate all those introductions, super. Um, if it means that, you know, I can't, I, I can take your business, super. But what happens is I think is, is the people who approach it from the relationships like me and Clint and, and everybody here really is, is relationship focused um they're the names that are the more long-standing the roi it's a long game and the roi is higher mm -hmm. um than than just the um what's new and bright and shiny right and you know you can leverage it you can be a little machiavellian too like when i was a social worker i would go and i would bring like a facility nine like phenomenal uh, you know, pay, uh, patients slash clients that had a lot of money and they were with it and they were easy. And then I would bring them that one that was extremely difficult and had no money. And no insurance just, that was homeless, that needed all the things that you would then say, but the do you things. remember those other patients that I referred to you? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And, and it helps you to, it helps you to advocate for your clients. I mean, it's the same thing when a real estate agent deals with a very busy lender or you're trying to, you know, get someone into new construction, or you know, push your client up in uh, the line to get the help that they need. But what you say, you know, where you ask people to help, what I say at my networking events, and when I get on a phone call with someone that I've never met before, um, I say, what are what are your goals? So the purpose of this call, or you know, just when I meet them, is what are your goals, and how can I help you achieve them? And it's a phenomenal icebreaker. And I get right to the point, you know, uh, if, and, and they're aware that if I'm helping them, it's helping all of us because we're, we're, we're just start discovering our purpose right off the bat. Adam Bricker, how you're a connector, Mr. Connector, Adam connects. How do you yeah, know? I'm really glad. Yeah. I'm really glad that, that you brought this subject up today because it's, I, I am a connector. Um, and I'm really, really good at the mechanical side of referrals. Uh, everything that you guys said about relationships, that's, that's, that's where it's a little bit more difficult for me. Um, I don't use word of mouth as much as I use word of mouse. I literally build into every product I make a referral button that all my clients, best clients can use to refer my clients via text or email on every product I put together. Tomorrow, I'm launching a brand new showcase of my cards. It's literally just giving broad referrals to my best clients. So tomorrow, we'll be featuring four different clients, an author, a coach, a copywriter, and a special guest, <clears throat> and I'm literally introducing them to masses. So the quantity of the referral for me is great. Um, but what you guys said about relationships really, really touched me. I had that conversation with my coach. And um, so I'm working on building relationships. So my quantity is really wide, but it doesn't go very deep. I mean, think about it. A lot of you have been on this call with me for the whole year, and we've never spoke one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, that's something that I'm, I'm developing. But I am known 
to my clients, to the people who hire me as a huge so source of referrals for them. And the other part of that is when they give me a referral, I always offer a referral fee. However, if they don't want it, I ask them if they would allow me to pass it on to their friend who they referred. So my referrals, my program's pretty well defined. They either get $50 or $100 based on, you know, which product they have. And I'll call them up and say, hey, listen, I was offering Dan a, a referral for um, introducing me to you. And he said uh, it would be best served if I just gave you $50 off. And they're just, they're every, it's a win for everybody. Now, some industries, you know, you're not legally allowed to take referral fees for, you know, for <laughs> some things you can and others you can't, but people do want to give you that fee. You can choose a charity that you would like that, that fee to go to, like the referral fee could go to, to Katie with going places, for example. So don't just necessarily, you know, turn down that out of hand because that's part of the person's budget mm -hmm. they need to spend that money. They want to spend that money. And they, they would love to support a charity as well. I build it into every one of my clients. And if we don't give it to the referral fee, I have the, the Feed the Children program. And uh, we actually have turned around and, uh, and gifted that to Katie's organization through Facebook one time. So it was, yeah, it was fun to do that. Um, and yeah, we're just happy to you know, help, help children of all ages. Excellent. Uh, Mark Share, are you there? No, I'm not. Is that is that Mark there? Or is that just his background? I can't tell. It's me. Mark, referrals, referrals. How do you do it? Um, I learned this from you when we first started doing Rockstar. How can I help you become more successful? That's that was one of the best learning experiences I got from doing Rockstar. I love that, and. Um, that's pretty much the way we do it. When you guys were talking about giving brownies and things like that, we had a situation with a very large case and we had to get medical records. And the blocker who said, you know, we can't find them, we moved offices. And we tried to figure out what we could give her to motivate her. And when we figured it out, we've used this, and this is an awesome thing. We offer to send a cleaning crew to people's home. You'd be amazed at the response you get from that. Better than brownies, Ron. I'm telling you. Wow, that's that is a great that's a great service. So, so how do you how do you do that exactly? In you just go find you know a well reviewed cleaning company, and say I'm going to send four people to your house for four hours. And you tell them what you want done. And people really, really like that. And it gets them very motivated because it's something that nobody else does. And they really seem to enjoy it. They it's something, the, the one thing that us busy people probably are always looking around the house saying, hey, I wish we, the house could be a little more organized. The house could be a little more clean. It depends on who you're dealing with. You know, if you're dealing with someone who's a bachelor, they love someone who's going to come and disinfect their bathrooms. Um, when you're dealing with women that live in places where there's a lot of windows, they love someone who's going to come and clean the windows on the inside and the outside. Pretty interesting. So that's something that we've been using for a while now, and it works quite well. Excellent. And, um, on a secondary note, did you see what Governor DeSantis said last night, Steve? Uh, was it regarding all the mask restrictions? No. Florida no. is officially open 100% with zero restrictions. Well, that's great. You know, we I know we've been making calls to venues all over Florida this week, and we're ready to right. have our events there in a big way. I'm just letting you know, that happened last night, so I think you'll start to get some good responses. I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, we talk about having, like, who here is like a really big list that they've developed over a period of time? I know Rhonda has, and Adam. And so what do you think about, you know, bringing someone into your organization that could actually, since you can't follow up with all of them, that would regularly call the people on your list just to see, hey, I'm calling on behalf of Rhonda. 
She's been really busy lately, but she just wanted to know if there's anything that you need. I think um, you need. I think that's something you need to have. I preach that in our organization, and when people, it's amazing when I have people call me up and go, you know, I have all these clients, and I reached out to them, and they need my help some more, as well as the fact that I reached out to them, they gave me a referral. I said, see? Yeah, and you know, I think that there's been a lot of changes because we've been spending so much time on the phone. Uh, organizations are changing. Uh, you know, I use a showing service here that opens up all the doors for me of all the houses in North Carolina, really the whole United States if I wanted to. And they are hiring people, not just from the Philippines, they're hiring people from the Philippines to answer the phone and Serbia and Russia and Poland and in India. And they're great. You know, we're, I'm really getting used to hearing that foreign voice on the phone because I feel we're really becoming very international in that regard. I think we're almost at the stage that you could hire an assistant from overseas to help you with your relationship management if you hire the right person. Yeah, and I know in India, they actually have schools where they teach the folks there to talk, hey, y'all, how you doing? My name is Billy Bob. <laughs> and you're talking to someone from India. And that's I've for real. A, I've, I've had a car or two like that. Yeah. Yeah, terrific. Rhonda, what are your thoughts on that? I love that, actually. I think that is absolutely brilliant. Um, it really is. Because you know what? People are always happy to hear from you, especially now more than ever. You know, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally zoomed out. You know, I spend way too much time in front of a computer and the phone still works. And, you know, people are like shocked when you call them and, you know, you just go, hey, I just wanted to see how you are. Because the isolation through this whole thing, there was an article um, in our local paper about how networking is coming back right, in-person networking, and how it's really challenging for some people, even like myself, who's a super extrovert, I've been isolated for over a year, you know, trying to assimilate back in and seeing people, right, so maybe the way to start is actually on the phone, because we yeah, really well, haven't done that. Anyone else to go with you to an event, like a wing person as well, I'm yeah. going, to, why don't you come with me, I'll tell you, I've been to a few events in the, the last few months, and the people that are at them are extreme. I mean, they're beyond themselves excited. And uh, I was listening to Jack Brockman, who's a panelist on the show, literally grab someone who had never been to a physical networking event like Rockstar Connect before and say, hey, I make all my money from going to events like this. And this is where I also make all my friends. And I'm going to go out on a limb to you and say, hey, here's my phone number. I think I know people I can refer you to. Why don't we grab a cup of coffee and grab a lunch? He was very forward uh, in, in the, the start of the relationship. And I think that's because you know, he, he does want to help this person uh, be successful with networking. And there's going to be a lot of new people coming to it. I mean, there could be a whole generation of, uh, we're getting a lot of younger people coming to the events. They used to think it was really square to go to a networking event. And they're going to it and they're like, we're grinders. We were at an event in Charlotte. There was a young guy there, I'd say he was in his 20s, he was a mortgage lender. And there was another guy who was a financial service guy from New York Life who couldn't have been more than 24. And they were just like, we're out here because we want to make business and we want to make friends and we're excited about this. And we've been locked up for a year. Like We have a lot of pent up energy. We're ready to get get to business. Well, you know, Stephen, I, if I can say you have you have the built the best built in wingman. So you you have a distinct advantage over over most, so that's well, one to add. Sarah's great. I mean, when she's not at an yeah. event, yeah, I definitely have a less successful event, a hundred percent. Downtown last week, I I did the event myself, and uh, definitely more fun with Sarah. Katie, uh, your thoughts on how you make referrals? I know you make a lot of them. Yeah, um, I mean, mine just come from. I love when I someone says they need somebody and I'm like, Oh, I know, I know someone. It just, I, it's, it, it's really exciting to refer people that I know do good work. And it's exciting to know I'm going to help bring them business, especially, you know, when someone actually follows through, I've never actually been given a referral fee or a bonus or whatever. Um, but I don't even think about that really. I just, you know, you want to help the people you know and likes businesses grow. 
we're going to, with my online academy, we're going to be doing a referral bonus. So anyone that refers someone to us, we're going to give, I think we said like a hundred dollars or one fifty or something to them. Um, and so just as incentive people to keep trying to refer people to us. Um, but you know, obviously with my nonprofit, there's no referral. We don't give out that. And I was a teacher before that. So, you know, that doesn't apply. So it's kind of this whole thing is I just get excited when I, cause I meet so many people. I meet everyone in every industry. Cause I don't have, everyone is my target, you know, because anyone could be a donor, volunteer sponsor. So I meet some people in all different industries at networking events. And I go to so many of them that it is, it's fun to, you know, pass someone's info on to someone else and have them use them. Well, with your, your, with networking, it's amazing. So, you know, I, I mentor a lot of people and I speak to a lot of people and they'll say, you know, some of our hosts, in fact, some of our hosts that may not totally understand what it's like to be a host, they haven't gotten it yet. They haven't gone through all the training and they'll say, I haven't got any of my business from network, from my networking event. And I go, okay, well, where are you getting my, your business from? They go, I don't know where I'm getting my business from. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's your fundamental problem. You're getting your business from all the efforts that you're doing. Do them in the most efficient way possible and track who you meet and where you meet them. So everyone that I do business with, I know where I initially met them from and how they connect with one another and uh, who's friends with who and who may not get along with, with each other. And it helps. And I'll tell you, when you get to a certain point, uh, level with your um with your referrals you actually reach the endorsement level so rockstar connect and, and and myself i get paid money people that you know i believe in their business they say hey i'd like to take it a little bit further i want to use you in my marketing campaign and as an advertisement as an endorsement and they write very nice size checks for that privilege now of course if you're going to do endorsement you have to believe in that product you have to use that product and be familiar with it, but that's the, the next level of, of referrals. Jennifer, well, Stephen, you... can I say something about your networking events? So a lot of people, and I think this is a this is a problem just across networking in general. Uh, the people that you talk to that aren't used to networking, they'll say, I didn't get anything from that networking event, so it's not worth it for me. It's not worth my time. It's not worth my effort to go. It's like, oh, okay, I've had these conversations a million times. It's like, okay, how many times did you go? Where did you go? Oh, I only went that once really? Like, that's your problem. Stay consistent, stay present, show up. It's consistent. Show up, you're going to get the business. But on the flip side of that, you can kind of get the vibe right away, yeah. right? Like, you can get the vibe if you're like, you know what? I may have made the wrong decision, and I'm happy for the chips and salsa, but I'm going to walk <laughs> away, right? Like, there are some times right. when you do have to trust your gut, and you're like, maybe I'll revisit this six months down the line. Yeah. So, like... I think that there is an element there, but I agree. It's, it's, but that's when the response is, you know what, this may not have been the right time for me to go visit this one. It's not that I didn't get anything out of it. I did get right. something out of it. I learned I don't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> True. That's what it is. I think you have to get out of your own way. I have never gone to an event or never met people that is not, it, it ended up with a meaningful connection or ended up with money, or I know that the money, if there's money to be coming, may be coming in the future. Because there's some people, you know, I, we go, we come back to each other multiple times, and we try to do business with one another. It doesn't click for both sides. But I know that eventually they will, and they're learning about me, and they're learning about my business, and they're making potential referrals to me. And I'm solving problems in their business and they're solving problems in, in my business. It's a mutuality for it. It's for people that participate in tribes. You know, small events, there's been, there's, you know, coming like someone like Mark Scher and the people in his company, they're big believers in small events and they make a lot of money from small events. They know the most important thing though is consistency. It's, it's not just doing it once, it's doing it, it's doing it frequently uh, and a schedule and then gauging what works and then changing what doesn't work. Jennifer Williamson, you have not got an opportunity to speak. I know that you are, you know, your business is doing great. You're expanding to Florida. Uh, referrals, what do they do for you? How do you make referrals? How do you accept referrals? 
Well, I think anything I say is pretty much everyone has already put into practice, you know, networking through current clients, through, you know, emailing, uh, LinkedIn, Messenger. And, and it it does, you know, it, it's almost like karma. What co- goes around comes around, making sure that, you know, when you meet someone, you kind of keep that in mind. And it does help to write it down someplace or have it in a CRM in some place. Uh, so I know that this person is interested in some way to be a connector or be referred by someone. Um, and they would be equally as um, enthusiastic about referring you to someone else. And those are the key um, I, like um, important referrals that you should make because they might or they have a higher chance of referring you to someone that might need your services. Um, so you kind of have to have some kind of ranking system. That's what I recommend. Uh, um, so that you don't just kind of going through the emotions and, and doing it here and there is great, but you know at least you have some way to track and some way to keep everyone's name on record uh, someplace. But yeah, I definitely want to check out this uh, mailbox power. I've been reading it on their website um, and and try this out because it's I think it might be a great way to not only you know keep your current clients happy, but definitely reach out. You know, instead of a cold call, this might be a better way. Uh, to get more, you know, your foot in the door a lot easier than a, a straight up email or phone call. I mean, it's something you want to do anyway. So if you can approve the, the only thing that prevents you from doing it is time and efficiency. So if you can use something like that, or you can use Rockstar Connect or Adam Connects uh, or a variety of other programs to make you more successful in your networking, absolutely do so. But to use you as an example, I would say that your level of confidence, first of all, is through the roof compared to when when I first met you on this panel. Because when you first came on the panel, I had I, I felt like you know I had to pull your teeth a little bit or poke you to participate. Now you bring excellent information and you've expanded your business. And I, I think that you are a, a phenomenal example for people about how it what happens when you work with your peers? Would you agree with that, Jennifer? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely get a lot of value. That's why I keep attending these these meetings or you know mastermind groups. I would group this in with. It's not really. I, I wouldn't call this a peer networking group. This is more like peers giving each other's professional advice to each other and, and encouragement. That's uh, very hard to find. Mm-hmm. So excellent point. And you know, for me, it's like a good, I haven't had a one on one with Jennifer yet. I haven't spoken with Jennifer. I do speak with her on the panel, but I know that sometime in the next couple of months, I'm going to reach out to you. We're going to have a conversation and we're going to do something together. We're going to do a fun event or, or, or something that's going to improve your business and improve my business as well. And, and hopefully everybody that's on this panel will, will benefit from it as well. Cause I'm thinking about all of you uh, during the week, you know, between the, the panels, I'm thinking, how can I help the people in this group and the people that listen to this group? Uh, does anyone want to add anything about uh, networking? Andrew, I know that you you turned yellow for a little bit, so I assume you have something you wanted to add. Oh, I can't even hear him. Turned yellow? What do you mean? Your screen turns yellow as soon as you go, when you make a noise, like, uh, uh, like you're going to say something. Whoever does that, their screen turns yellow, so that way I know to like go to you. Oh, no, you hear my dogs barking in the background at Mark's phenomenal demonstration of the southeastern North Carolina accent. <laughs> ah, they reacted to that. I keep my f- microphone muted for that for that very reason because it's 160 pounds of dogs barking. Well, you know, there's something that you know. Who who's a Dale Carnegie fan? Who read Dale Count Carnegie books? You haven't read them though, probably for 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. Time to go back to your Dale Carnegie. He had some great stuff on, uh, and so does Zig Ziglar, on mirroring people. So that's not like you know mimicking their accent or anything like that but it's it's making your uh the way you speak and speed match theirs so they're more comfortable so you don't they don't feel like you're talking over them or interrupting them it's an excellent uh you know resource to go back to dale carney it's really the bible everything else i think in sales is derivative of zig ziglar and kale Car- and dale carney adam's smiling because i know that he's a huge zig ziglar fan Oh, yeah. Zig and, and, and his little known bud, buddy, Mort Utley, uh, really helped me learn. And I'm a door knocker like you're like you. I put myself through college selling door to door. 
it's a great experience. I mean, for me, the best experience I ever had uh, was working in a boiler room in South Florida in my 20s with my cousin who had been selling on the phone for 40 years with, with real degenerate salespeople. The guys that, you know, they're so high intensity, they can only work like 10 hours a week. They make in 10 hours a week with five men making in, in a week. And they know all of that. I mean, they know all the Zig Ziglar stuff. They know all the Dale Carnegie. They, they know the, the power of positive thinking. They know how to determine whether a client is their client in, in the moment. It's amazing. So if you haven't had that experience and uh, if anybody wants to you know, pick up one of those books and do a little book club with me, I'd, be, I'd love to do it because it's uh, well worth reading again. I will, yes, wanted, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I wanted to go back a second. Something that Mark said and, and Jennifer's comment really, Jennifer Williams' comment really kind of opened the door on this because I do consider this more than just a referral leads group. This is my one of my business advisory groups. Like I come here and I listen to great advice uh, that's given constantly by this group. Mark brought up the point about phone call and leveraging, um, you know, getting leverage. I've come to learn through a lot of the people that refer me business that the expectation is that they want me to be making phone calls. They don't want me to get somebody to make phone calls for me prefer to hear from Diego, not somebody who works for Diego. Uh, that being said, I, I, I've got great teammates who have elevated their position. I'm curious from you all that are, you know, small businesses that have, your name is your brand. Have you figured out how to get away from your name <laughs> when it comes to having to be that frontline person? Well, I, I mean, I have, I, I would have to say that when I had my first businesses, they were so involved with me. The only people that, when people call, they only wanted to speak with me. And because of that, I couldn't grow the business the way I wanted to grow the business. And I read the book, um, E-Myth. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. And uh, it teaches you how, it teaches you how to brand a company. So it, even if your name is the company, you can step away from the company and you can duplicate and you can scale. And when we started Rockstar Connect, we empowered all of our employees to be representatives of the company. And Diego, I heard the, this in a realtor thing, asking how to exit the business when you're ready to retire, when your name and your face has been the brand the whole time. And the response was set that expectation on day one that you have an entire team that works with you. Mm -hmm. And instead of, I'll call you back on Monday with an update. It's I or someone from my team will call you with an update. They don't expect you 100% of the time. So by having that conversation up front, they never get hurt when you're not the one making the call. It's yes, it's you're you're having people from your company that are that you trust to represent you uh, and they your clients know that they're hand picked. Uh, when I've had businesses where I wouldn't even allow some of my employees to interact with the customer until they've been with me for six months. They stayed behind the scenes. If Sarah can attest to that in some of my companies, she was one of my employees. Her job was not talking to the client because she wasn't ready for that yet. So you have to make that investment in your, your team to make sure that they can represent and I have something to add to this as well. Um, and this is not for my business necessarily, but you know, Diego, you know me, I'm a, I'm a connector. I want to introduce everybody. And I've been, you know, saying, saying, Hey, how do you, you know, one of these BNI call, I mean, questions, how do you make warm introductions? And, you know, Jenny, Jenny has a system with the emails and all that stuff. That's not me. So the way that I've built my, my brand, so to speak, is if I say you should reach out to somebody, you telling that person that I said to reach out to them is enough. You don't need a warm introduction. They came from Clint. Everything else is golden after that. So that's just my, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just the way I built I mean, it's myself. A great, it's a great way to do it. But when you find you're scaling and you're yeah. doing referrals, mm -hmm. and then you do do them on a massive level. Mm -hmm. But when it gets farther than that, you don't want it to get to a point where people just who know Clint say, hey, Clint told me to give you a call and they don't even know Clint. You should definitely talk to me first. Right. <laughs> right. right. But, um, and I'm, I want to comment on what 
I want to comment to Clint's thing too, because I think that there's, um, there's a, a, and to Diego's point, there's a, a way to do it, even if you are the face, right? So like, look at realtors, for example, when people hire Linda Craft and the Linda Craft team, they know at this point, she's grown to the point that you know, you're likely not going to be working with Linda Craft. Same thing with, you know, the Nina Parker group or the, the, the Wolgan group or whatever it is that you're going to go and find like, just because that's the name doesn't mean that's going to be the person with whom you're working. And one of the ways that you can start um, growing that, right, is like my introduction method is my introduction method so that I'll be able to leave my assistant with a list of being like, hey, I need these three emails written. And we have a template that's in a spreadsheet that all she has to do is go copy and paste. And then she's doing it. It's coming for me with my name. Um, but it's it's still there's a, there's a, a system that's that's standing up behind that. So as you grow in scale and then as the business grows, then you can use the words like what Andrew said, you know, it's from my team. It's from my, you know, and I highly recommend if you are planning on growing a team, work with a coach, right? Like I hired a coach to do strength finders with me to do like a very specific coaching program based on my strengths and my blind spots so that I can effectively and efficiently grow a team based on all of these things that I know where, you know, I have somebody calling me out on where the places I may take for granted <laughs> my personality of things that, you know, you know you it's just the way I do things. Also reflects very well on you mm -hmm. because you're giving them opportunities to be in leader, to be in leadership roles. And also from a networking perspective, that's something you can leverage as well. Like, so Linda Kraft, very few people are dealing with Linda Craft, but when I do a transaction with the Linda Craft team, I have Linda Craft's phone number and I have her email. I'm CCing her in. So Linda knows I'm having a transaction with her team. Mm -hmm. So that's another important reason uh, to network. And as far as utilizing your team, they can help you get to go where you need to go much more quickly. So Alan, who is you know, our first you know employee and you know number one important person on our team, everyone is fantastic and, and he is beyond fantastic. I can say to Alan, Alan, write a letter, get it 95% of the way or do a project 95% of the way, you know how I think, then present it to me and then we'll work on it together. But it's gone even beyond that. I don't even have to say that. I'll say, Alan, get it 95% of the way there and then share it with Adeline or share it with Jackie and let them get you the rest of the way. Yeah. Yeah, my copywriter actually switched me to someone on her team, and I had no idea. <laughs> That's how good it was. Well, it's letting go. It's like learning that, you know, we all we all have very high opinions of ourselves, but we also have doubts about ourselves as well. If you have a good team, it alleviates a lot of, of uh, the con conceit, and uh, it also enables you to be better, so much better, and provide so much better service. So Alan has been reading and, you know, I wish Alan would come on the screen, but he's not going to do it. But Alan's been reading a book on real estate uh, by Gary Keller for the last six months, uh, the millionaire real estate agent. And uh, he's going to be like an expert on that book. You know, and he, I've tried to read that book so many times. And I get like five pages and I'm like, <laughs> he's going to be teaching me about my business soon and telling us what we can do as a team together with this excellent book to improve our team. So the sky's the limit when you're, when you're able to let go and not just be one individual uh, and, and just, you know, you're branding towards your team. Your team just happens to be using your name. And that is one of the most crucial and difficult skills, the delegation and handing off. Yeah. I mean, it's something Sarah's had to learn over the years. And when she finally learned how to do it, she was like, Oh my God, now I get it. She felt guilty about it before. But it was an epiphany. You need to let people do their work because we get, you know, we, we're a society that gets satisfaction from work. And we're at the end of the hour. Anybody want to give a final word before we go? Well, I want to thank everyone for being with us today. Uh, you really shined. I think you gave some great tips uh, for the audience, and uh, you've certainly helped me as well. Let's, we'll see you all next week at the Three Martini Lunch. Have a productive week. And by the way, I no longer say pr busy week, productive week, much better term. 
everyone talk to you soon bye bye